Now, before we get started, you need to understand that for a letting agent to give you a property, they are essentially trusting you with their beloved, trusted landlord. So they're taking a gamble as well as the landlord. And if you're brand new, that is going to be a big ask. So point number one, and I learned this the hard way, is you've got to set up correctly. That means a professional image, a website, a brand, professional telephone numbers, professional email addresses, so that when the agent looks into you, they can think, you know what? These people are credible. We can build with these. Yeah, I'm willing to trust them. Second point I learned was at times I was walking into these letting agencies and just talking loosely about, you know, do you have any properties or would you be open to a company let? The problem is this. Think about it, right? A letting agent is going to be rewarded. They're going to be measured by the amount of properties they let. In other words, if you're quite woolly about um, the potential for a deal, they're just going to be like, Do you know what? I've got James over there. I've got Amy over there. They want to view 10 Smith Street and they're going to move forward quickly. So tip number two is you need to identify a property before you make contact so that when you actually speak to the letting agent, you can say, hey, you know that property on 10 Smith Street? Can I arrange a viewing? That way they can see the potential for a let, which means there's something in it for them. And there's actually a tangible thing for you to get on the viewing with them, build rapport, make an offer and show that you are serious. Ah, now step three is a tough one because this is the part where most of you probably crash, burn and give up. Now, notice if you skip to number three here without doing the first two, you've lost before you started. So make sure you do the first two. But now, step three, it's time to call the agent, all right? But this time when you call them, remember, you're set up, you've got a property that you're inquiring about, and then you need to just keep it simple. So I know what you're thinking, what do I say? Well, all you need to do is you just need to say this. Hi, I can see you've got a property on 10 Smith Street. Is it still available? Ah, great. Would it be possible to arrange a viewing, please? Okay, yeah, no problem. H how's two o'clock? Great. Yep, sure, no problem. Okay, fabulous. Sounds good. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye. That's it. Simple as that, okay? Do not overshare unless they ask. Now, I know what you're thinking. You know, there's some of you, you know, the other end of this camera saying, yeah, but Simon, shouldn't we lay all our cards on the table so they know exactly what we're doing? No, stop, stop it. You're ruining it. Now look, you wouldn't ask somebody to marry you on your first date. So it's important to do this in layers. That's so important. And some of you may not be comfortable or some of you may have two extra points, all right? The first point is what happens if I'm an hour away from the viewing and I pull up tomorrow at two o'clock and they just kick me out instantly. Then I have to drive an hour home. So you've wasted two hours. And you know what? You'd have a point. If you are not close in your area, which you should be, you should be if you're starting, then sure, you may have to let them know what you're doing. And I can touch on that in a minute. But otherwise, just get yourself to the viewing. The second thing I know some of you are thinking, but isn't that, you know, wasting their time or it's not ethical? Well, look, trust me when I say this, right? They're already going to the property. Every single time they get a viewing, they get a tick at the back of the office. You're going to put an offer in, which is going to make them look good. And once you're in the property, you can build rapport and then you've got half a chance of getting the deal because I've done this, I've measured this, I've worked with hundreds of people on this. And if you overshare at this point, people will say no when you could have turned that into a yes. All right, marinating that. Look, I admit it, not every phone call will go that smoothly. So what happens if they start asking you tough questions? Is the property for yourself? When do you wanna move in? How many people is the property for? And all I'm going to say here is never lie. Always be upfront and truthful when asked, all right? And you just need to work on the script of exactly how to say it so that you keep the deal. Now, one thing, if they say to you, look, 
We don't do company lets, that's that. Just drop it and move on because there's plenty more deals in the sea, all right? Keep it moving. Now it's time for step four. This is the big part, the viewing, right? And you need to make sure that on this viewing, you are building rapport. So important because think about it. People do business with people they know, like, and trust. And the most important thing with a letting agent is to find that person that you get on with, that you do know, like, and trust, and they're willing to put you on. I've had letting agents that hated their boss and actually just passed me landlord deals directly. That's the power of building relationships. I'm not saying do that, but I'm just saying it is a thing. So on the viewing, focus on building rapport, get the agent to sell you the property. And when they ask you, they're gonna ask you a question like, when do you move in? Is it just you? Or whatever they're gonna ask you, be honest. Say, it's for my company. Uh, have your elevator pitch, you know exactly what it's for. And top tip, at the end of the viewing, whatever you do, make sure that you show intent and put an offer in. Okay, and say, look, if I wanna put an offer in, who's the best person to speak to? If they say me, offer asking price right there and then, offer three years, move on. If it's somebody in the office, leave the viewing, call up, all right? Make the offer and then sit and wait. Wow, I know what you're thinking, so much value. Why is it taking me so long to find this guy? He's an absolute G. He's so much better than Samuel Leeds and Cooler. I get it, I know what you're thinking. I got you covered, right? The final three stages is the business end. This is where it's all about making it count because you've got the application and referencing, all right? You've got the negotiations and contracts. And then last but not least, you've got the keys, right? And if you do all that right, you could be sat here with me having a nice ice cream in beautiful sunshine, all right? So let me give you some value. Let me show you how to do this. But before I do, all right, make sure you subscribe and make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to give you some free stuff to help you across this process. So once you put the offer in, one of two things are going to happen. They're either just going to accept the offer, happy days, or they're going to refuse the offer. Clearly, if they refuse, go back to step two. If they accept it, they're then going to start the application process and referencing. Now, this is where it gets a bit tough because if you're a brand new business or you've not got the necessary income to be a personal guarantor, you may have just wasted your time. So I need you to make sure that if you're doing letting agent deals, that you can guarantee the rent personally or somebody you know can. Otherwise, you're better off focusing on direct to vendor. In terms of the other checks they'll do, they'll do a credit check. So if your credit's really bad, eh, this might not be for you. Um, they may ask for references, that's okay. You may have a past landlord or you may be able to get another reference. But one thing I want you to remember here, all right? The ultimate decision, despite any of these things, is the landlords. So if you fail everything, but the landlord likes your offer, and it fits with them, they still can go with you. So don't be disheartened and give it a go. One last top tip. If the letting agent asks you to pay a fee at any point during this process, the best thing to do is just go ahead and pay it, all right? Because once you pay it, they're invested, you're invested, and you've got a chance to move forward. But understand there is a slight risk because you may lose it. So when they ask you for a fee, just clarify what it's for exactly. But clarify when you would get that back or when you would not get that back and then get it paid and move on. Boom, it's got a new booking guys. Let's have a little look, Let's see what this one's saying. There we go. Check this out guys, two nights, ah, 255 pounds. I should be getting more than that. As you can see, I'm getting bookings, man. This is real life stuff, 255 pounds uh, for two nights and the cash flow keeps coming. Ah, it's midweek, that's why. I keep the prices low in the midweek, then hike them high in the weekend to get them big leisure bookings. So let's move on. Contracts and negotiations. This is tough and to be fair, I will do a whole video specifically on this because this is a whole different minefield. But all you need to know is, all right, you do not want to sign an AST with a letting agent. Never do that. You need to sign the correct agreement, which is typically a company let agreement, and you need to change the necessary clauses to make sure that you are not illegally subletting, all right? More on that in another video. If you're still here, if you do all of that, 
you may just get yourself your first or your next rent to rent deal. And the best thing about this is once you've done one deal with a letting agent and you do a good job, they will keep giving you more and more and more. As I say, I've got agents where I've done over 10 deals and that could make you over 10,000 pounds a month from one relationship. Now, as promised, if you want support on this stuff, I've got a 12 steps checklist to get in set up. And I'm also going to give you a free call script as well. So check below in the description, download those to help you on your way. Make sure you subscribe. I appreciate you guys. All right. I really, really do. I hope you found this useful. If you want more content like this, let me know and I'll see you in the next one.